All right, what is going on guys? Welcome to what is essentially a redo of all the achievement guides I made for Human Fall Flat's base game. I've started to become pretty disappointed in the quality of some of those early videos, so I'm just going to be remaking all of the guides for the original 47 achievements in this one video. Now, I am going to make some exceptions for some of the cumulative achievements, like carrying something for a thousand meters or walking for 10 kilometers. Stuff that's already pretty self-explanatory and that you're going to do any Anyway, it just might take a while. However, some of the cumulative achievements can only be done on certain levels, and so I'll be showing you how to get those as soon as possible. Now, the only other achievement I need to talk about is the speedrun achievement, where we need to complete the game from start to end in one run. So what this means is basically in one sitting without exiting any of the levels, you'll need to start at the mansion level and continue playing until you finish the ice level. So even though there's four levels that weren't part of the base game, I'm still going to be covering how to complete them pretty Pretty quickly, but I'm only going to be focusing on those four level completions because the guides I have for those additional DLC achievements are still okay. Also, all of these clips were recorded on two separate accounts, so if you see the different color achievement pops, that would be the reason. So with all that said, let's go ahead and jump right on into Mansion. There are four achievements that we need to complete in Mansion, which are No Escape, Fall and Respawn Once, Mind the Gap, where we need to take the big shortcut jump in the middle of the level, Pigeon Simulator, where we need to stand on the head of the statue and the leap of fail and that one is just for completing the level and as soon as you have fallen into the level we're just going to take a quick turn to the right and jump off the side once you make it back to the ground you will unlock the no escape achievement for falling and respawning once moving on we're going to head up the stairs to the left and through the door head up the stairs once again and now we'll get ready for the mind the gap achievement and we just need to jump over the gap to the next part of the level go ahead and get a running start and hold your arms straight out in front of you. Get as close as you can to the edge without falling off and then make the jump. If you've gotten enough speed to jump far enough, you should be hanging off the ledge just enough to pull yourself up. Now for our third of four achievements in this level, we need to stand on the head of this statue. So make your way behind the statue to the railing, go ahead and climb up, and then we're just going to jump with our arms held out in front of us onto the statue's head. And that should be the Pigeon Simulator unlocked. Now all we need to do is complete the level. Now head to the door just behind the statue and we need to press each of these buttons with one of our hands. That will open the door and we can fall to the next level. And that should complete the Leap of Fail achievement, and you should now be in the Train level. Once again, we're looking at four achievements in the Train level. First up, we have Convertible Ride, where we need to ride 50 meters in a dumpster. Public Service, where we need to place five pieces of debris in a dumpster. Perfectionist, we need to align a flipped bench with a wall. And lastly, Choo Choo, for completing Train. So straight out the gate, you'll see a bright yellow dumpster to the right. We'll need to open it by climbing onto the back of it and pulling the lid open. And I found the best way to get some distance in this dumpster is to give it a running start, climb inside, and then fall off the level. You may need to do that a few times for it to officially get to 50 meters, but once you have that will complete the convertible ride achievement. Next up, we're just going to take that bright yellow dumpster once again and move it over to the wrecked train. Underneath the train, there are some small bits of broken wall. All we need to do is place five of these into the dumpster, and that will be the public service achievement unlocked. Now make your way through the door that was hidden behind the dumpster, and just to the right we should find a flipped over bench.
Grab the top of it with one hand and then just walk to the right to flip it over. And now align it with the wall by pushing or pulling either of the sides. After doing so, you will have unlocked the Perfectionist achievement. And for our last achievement, we just need to finish up the level. Return to the initial starting area, head over to the left side, and you will see a wall. And then we're just going to grab the corner of this wall with one of our arms and swing around to the inside. Next, we're going to squeeze under the stairs and then climb on top of them. Head up the next flight of stairs as well. And then from here, we're just going to jump onto the underneath of the balcony above us. And then do kind of a monkey bar motion to get yourself to the edge of the balcony. Once you're close enough to the edge, you can safely let go. And that will finish the level, unlocking the Choo Choo achievement. Moving on to the level carry, we're going to be focusing on three achievements this time. First up, we have the It's Stuck achievement, where we need to jam a door with a box and go through it. Then we have Tower, where we need to stack all four boxes in the level on top of one another. And lastly, we have Don't Get a Splinter, where we need to complete carry. So the first thing that we're going to do in carry is walk over to the first box and place it on the first button. Next up, we're going to walk into the second room, grab the second box, and on our way back into the first first room, we're going to place it in the middle of the door. So now we just need to take the first box off the first button, and that will close the second box in the doors. From here, we just need to make our way back into the second room through the gap in the doorway. And that will be the It's Stuck achievement. Now I'm going to restart the level so we can get started on the second and more complicated achievement, Tower, where we need to stack all four of the boxes. So we're going to grab the first box once again and place it on the first button. Walk into the second room and grab the second box, take it back to the first room, and then remove the first box from the button and place the second box on top of the button. Now we're going to take the first box through to the second room and place it on the second room's button. Walk back into the first room, take the second box off the first button, and walk off the edge with it. You'll respawn in the second room with both boxes. Next up, we're going to take the second box and throw it into room 3, making sure that we don't get it mixed up with box number 3. Now we're going to climb down and grab box number 3, placing it on top of either the ledge or box number 2. Climb up the ledge and then grab box number three and take it into room number two and placing it on button number two. Removing the first box and taking the first box to the third room. Now go back into the second room and take the third box and jump off the edge with it. We should respawn in the third room with all three boxes. Once in the third room, bring the elevator down and grab any one of the three boxes and place it on top of the third room's button.
Now we're going to take the remaining two boxes and bring them into room four, making sure we don't mix them up with box number four. Once the two boxes are in room four, we're gonna jump down and grab box number four, place it on top of the elevator, and we're gonna take this back to room number three. So once again, replace the box that's on top of the button in the third room with the fourth box that we just grabbed. And then we want to take the box that we just replaced, and then we're going to take that other box into room number four. Once it's down with the other boxes, head back into room number three, grab the fourth box, and jump off the edge with it. This should respawn you in room number four with all four of the boxes. Now you can stack them in any order that you want, it doesn't matter. Um, and I also did find that putting them on the tracks and using the train car to kind of line them up help. And once the last box of the four has been placed on top of the other ones, that will be the tower achievement unlocked. Now, to finish the level carry, we're just going to climb onto the red train car, jump on top of the wall, climb up the wall even still, and then on the other side, we want to make it as close to that small ledge as we can. And that should register to the game that we have completed the level carry, unlocking the Don't Get a Splinter achievement. Moving on to the fourth level mountain, we have four achievements once again that we're going to be taking a look at. First up, we have My Treasure, which we need to collect all the gems into a pile. Then we need to use a rope to go across the abyss. Next, we have Silent Hours slash Noisy Neighbors, and we need to get rid of the speaker set at the end of the level. And lastly, we have the What Goes Up achievement, where we need to complete Mountain. To start, we're just going to head forward until we get to the first cliffside by jumping across all of these rocks.
Once we're at the first cliffside, we're going to start climbing up until we get to the top. Then we're going to take the narrow path of ledges to the right, and that should lead us to the My Treasure achievement. So once you are on top of the platform with a cave in front of you, we're going to go ahead and walk inside the cave, head all the way to the left, and grab the lantern. And from here, there are seven bright green cubes that we need to find and put into a pile. The best way I found to navigate this was to pick up the lantern and start from the furthest left position in the cave and make our way right each time we find a cube. So as I go deeper into the cave, I'm just going to continue following the leftmost path. And then as soon as I find my first cube, I'm going to follow that same path back to the entrance of the cave, place it down outside. Now, as I continue to go back into the cave to get more gems, I really need to remember which paths I've gone down and which ones I haven't to save me the most amount of time. So by taking the most extreme left path and then moving one space right after every trip back, we should be able to find all the gems in a decently quick time.
Now, once we have collected all seven of the bright green cube shaped gems, to unlock the My Treasure achievement, we just need to put them all into one pile. Now that that's done, let's head back the way we came, and we're gonna take this red train car and move it to the left a little bit. Climb up the ledge to the left, and then climb onto the train car, and then the ledge above once again. Now we need to run and jump across the gap to the other side, and continue climbing up the rocks until we get to a tree with a rope on it. Grab onto the very end of the rope, and make your way to the right side of the tree, and fall off the ledge as far back away from the tree as you can. This should give you enough momentum to get to the other side. Once you feel like you have enough speed, let go of the rope, and very quickly put your arms out in front of you to catch the ledge. Once on the other side, we're going to climb up this angled rock, and jump onto the ledge just in front of the red train car. Now pull it towards you so it partially falls off the track. and then jump down. We're gonna reset the sloped rock so that the left side is higher than the right side. And then very quickly run to the left side and jump onto the pile of rocks in front of you. Turn around and then jump onto the red train car. And then you should be able to climb up the ledge just to the left. The last thing that we need to do is make our way up these set of stairs and into the house on top of the hill. Pull on the doors to open them, and then in front of you, you will see two speakers. We need to drop both of those out of the exit door before we finish the level. And that will unlock the Silent Hour slash Noisy Neighbors achievement. And finishing the level will unlock the What Goes Up achievement. Next up, we have the level Demolition, and we have four achievements that we're going to be looking for. Our first is going to be Wrong Direction, in which we need to use the window on our left instead of smashing a wall. Surprise slash Avalanche, where we need to unleash the Boulder Gate. Primal where we need to break four walls without using any gadgets, and lastly, brute force for completing demolition. Once you land, remove the two middle planks, barring the door in front of you, and hop into the room. Break the glass with the fire extinguisher, and then we need to smash the window on the left side with this big bucket. So pull the lever to the left. If it doesn't smash the window right away, bring the bucket back right a little bit, and then once again to the left, and it should smash the window. Next, we're going to pick up our fire hydrant and use it to smash the wall on the right. Climb through the wall and grab a piece of the wall, and use it to smash the wall on the left now. Once 
Once you have broken the second wall, we're going to turn around back through the first wall to the first area, and we're going to take two of these orange mattresses and stack them on top of one another directly in front of the window that we smashed with the big bucket. Jump on top and then climb through the window. This will unlock the wrong direction achievement. Proceed up the stairs until you find a fire extinguisher, pick it up and smash one of the windows to get out of the building. Take a right and climb on top of the building, and then jump down into the area to the left. You'll see some blue scaffolding in front of you. Go ahead and climb up to the top of that, and then remove the plank barring the doors in front of you. This will release a bunch of boulders, unlocking the surprise or avalanche achievement. Next, take one of the rocks from the avalanche and smash the wall just to your left. Make your way through the smashed wall, and on the other side, pick up a piece of smashed wall. There will be another wall that we need to smash just on the right in front of the train tracks. Once you have smashed this fourth and final wall, that will unlock the primal achievement. Now all we need to do is finish demolition, so I'm going to go ahead and restart the level. Make your way back into the first room by removing the planks. Then we're going to use the lever to move the bucket to smash the wall on the right. Pick up the fire extinguisher and smash the window in front of you, and go through the smashed wall. As you go through the smashed wall, you'll need to take a right, where you will find a spool. Drag it to the edge in front of the gap. Then climb up the spool and jump across the gap. Now that we're on the other side, we need to climb up the crane in front of us. And then we're just going to jump onto the building just behind us. From here, you should see two large blue pipes, and we will need to climb on top of one of them. Now, this will take a little bit of patience because it's not really how you're supposed to complete the level, but it is the fastest way to complete the level. So you'll need to climb up onto one of the blue pipes by either swinging your arms back and forth and gradually grabbing higher and higher with each swing, or you can grab with both hands, lift yourself up, and then let go and quickly re-grab a little bit higher. Once you have made your way on on top of the blue pipes, very carefully walk across them to the next building and climb on top of it. From here, we just need to go to the wall on the left and swing ourselves around to the middle of the back side so we can get as close to the exit door as we can. And if you're successful, that will complete demolition, unlocking the brute force achievement. Moving on to my favorite level, Castle, we have six achievements that we need to get completed. It's the first level where we can get the learn to swim achievement for drowning 10 times. We also have improvised ammo where we need to launch ourselves with the catapult. We also need to get the zipline achievement for ziplining from the church tower. Smooth moves where we need to parkour fluidly from the alley to the blacksmith for whom the bell tolls for ringing the castle bell. And lastly, storm the gate for completing it castle. So starting off in castle, we need to grab the rock and then break the lock on the door. Pull the lock hook out of the door handles and then swing the door open. Next, we're going to make our way up these stairs to the right and then jump into this windowsill above the gap. Stand in the windowsill, and we're just going to jump down to the next platform. Go through the doors and take a left. You should see a catapult.
push the catapult a little bit closer to the edge, and then wind it up with the handles on the left side of it. Jump on into the bucket and pull the lever. And we have made it inside the castle. And that will be the improvised ammo achievement unlocked. Now from here you can either go to the left, up the stairs and over the castle wall and there will be some water underneath you. Jump into the water and drown and we will only need to do that nine more times. You can also move this cart with the stone on top of it in the main courtyard and move it closer to the broken stairs so that you can get to the other side of these doors. This will create a checkpoint that's closer to the water so that you can just continue to jump in. Right, so once you have unlocked the Learn to Swim achievement, now if you move the cart with the stone block on top and jumped over the castle wall to where I am now, we can start the Smooth Moves achievement. Go ahead and turn around and remove the plank barring the door, pull the doors open, and then we're going to go grab the cart with the stone block on top. Take the cart and place it directly in front of this small house. Climb up the stone block and then onto the roof of the house. And this is where the achievement starts. So I'd recommend starting the jump to the first lantern as close to the castle wall as you can. Make sure you get enough momentum and then swing over to the next platform. Grab hold of the second lantern and let go to jump to the next platform. Jump over the gaps in front of you and then grab the third lantern. Hold on for a little while and it will swing you around the castle wall to the roof of a stable. Once you're on the roof we need to jump onto this broken bridge in front of us. and then walk through the archway. And then depending on how fluidly you made it over here, you will get the Smooth Moves achievement. Now we're just going to backtrack a little bit and go to the area where the stable was. You should find a second, larger stone block on top of a cart. We're going to pull this in between the bridge and the first house. Climb on top of the side of the bridge, and then jump onto the stone block, and then onto the roof of the house in front of you. Jump to the next house, and then onto the castle wall. We're just going to need to continue climbing up the castle wall until we get to the catapult. Once here, the catapult is already lined up with the bell, so we don't need to worry about that, but we will need to move it forward and backwards depending on the size of the rock. So go ahead and wind up the catapult. And then place any of the rocks from the pile in the bucket. Pull the lever to send the rock flying at the castle bell. And then depending on the size of the rock, as well as where the rock hit, move your catapult either forwards or back. Once you get it lined up perfectly, you will see the rock strike the bell, and hear an audible ding, and that will be the For Whom the Bell Tolls achievement unlocked.
With that done, we are now going to reset the level and make our way back over to the first initial catapult. Once you're at the catapult, we're going to line it up with the roof of the church, and then we're going to push it forward until the front wheels are teetering off the edge. From here, go ahead and wind up the catapult, hop in the bucket, and then pull the lever, and then you should be sent flying on top of the church roof. Now, once on top of the church roof, we're going to make our way over to the connected tower, and you will see some rocks jutting out of the side. We'll need to first climb into the window, and then very carefully jump to the second rock. Climb up the ledge and then walk around to the left. Hop up into the second window. Jump on the rock. And then jump to the top of the window. Up one more rock, and then you should be on top of the tower. From here, we're going to jump down into the hole, and you should see a metal cane. Grab the end of it, and then hook it onto the ledge above. Next, we're going to make our way out of the broken window, and then jump down to the narrow ledge just below us. And then from here, just repeat the climb from the second window up to the top of the tower. And then we're going to pick up the cane from where we left it hooked to the wall, and bring it to the top of the tower. Grab the cane close to the end. And then you should see a wire going from the tower to a castle wall in the distance. We need to get the hook around the wire, and then before you start, put the hook as far down the wire as you can, and then don't jump off, but just walk off the tower, and you should then zip line over this house and through a broken window in the castle wall. Now when you run into the house on the zip line, keep looking down so that the hook stays snug against the wire above. If not, once you hit the house, the hook could come loose, and you will probably have to restart the level to try again. But if you were successful, that should be the the zip line achievement unlocked. And now all we need to do is finish the level. We will be doing this by restarting the level, once again breaking the lock, climbing up the stairs, jumping the gap, and making our way out the second set of doors. From here we're going to make our way to the right this time. Grab onto the left side of the mountain in front of you, and then we're just going to let go of the hand that's further back, and then rotate our camera around so that we grab further on the mountain. Once you are over a giant hole in the mountain, drop down and catch yourself on the ledge. Jump down into the mountain, and then walk on top of the trap doors that will fall out from underneath you, and that will be the level complete, unlocking the Storm the Gate achievement. With all the achievements in Castle now done, we are now moving on to my absolute least favorite level, Water, which of course has the most achievements in the game, with a total of eight. And they are Breathing Exercise, where we need to get out of the water in 100 milliseconds to avoid drowning, Row, Row, Row Your Boat, where we need to use the rowboat to get to the cargo ship, Reverse Gear for entering the dock with the cargo ship, 
ship backwards, sail away for using any of the boats to travel one kilometer, beacon for lighting up the lighthouse, surfer for not getting wet while surfing down the mountain, and then feet first for completing water diving feet first, and lastly head first for completing water diving head first. So the first one that we're going to be going for in water is breathing exercise. So just walk into the water in front of the shore and just barely submerge your head under and you will start to hear some bubbles popping. We have 19 pops until we drown. So on the 17th or 18th pop, just make sure that you are out of the water and that will unlock the breathing exercise achievement. Next up we have the row 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 your boat achievement. So hop in the rowboat to the right of the start area and we're gonna go ahead and grab the handles of each oar. Now to row the boat, we're gonna need to look down and walk backwards at the same time. And then to pull ourselves forward, we're gonna walk forward and look up at the same time. So on both of the analog sticks, push down, wait until the oars are at the front. And then on both analog sticks, push up and you will start to row the boat forward. If you start turning away from where you're going, just use the left stick to walk left or right while rowing the boat and it will turn naturally. Now we just need to row our way through the giant archway. And in front of us, you should see a big cargo ship. Once we have made it to the cargo ship, go ahead and hop off the rowboat onto these floating wooden planks. And that should be the row, row, row your boat achievement unlocked. So now we can head up to the top of the cargo ship. And you will see two levers. We're going to start the reverse gear achievement by trying to turn the cargo ship around. All you need to do is push one of the levers forward and pull one of them back all the way. This will start turning the ship until the back is facing the dock. Once you're all lined up with the dock, just pull both levers into full reverse. Make some small adjustments on the way there if you need to. And by the time you get to the dock, you should have unlocked the sail away achievement for using any of the boats to travel one kilometer.
And then once you are actually in the dock with the cargo ship, that will be the reverse gear achievement unlocked. Now from here, we're just gonna restart the level and then hop into the rowboat once again and sail it through the giant archway. Just after the archway, you should see a gap in the rocks to the left. Park the boat here, jump into the water, and cross the water to the opening on the other side. From here we're gonna climb up this ledge, and then I swung across to the other side using the chain initially, but it seems to be easier to just jump across and catch the ledge. Now once you are on the other side, you should see a lever. Go ahead and use it to bring the rail car down towards you. And then once it's all the way stopped, quickly pull the lever the other direction to make the rail car go up the mountain, and then jump inside. Once you are now at the top of the mountain, we are going to head right around the rim of this lake towards the lighthouse. Once you're at the other end of the small lake, you should see a slope heading down towards the lighthouse. Slowly make your way down the slope to the lighthouse. walk inside the lighthouse, and start walking up the spiral staircase. At this point, I would recommend setting your brightness to as high as you can, because it is very difficult to see inside this lighthouse. Just keep climbing your way up to the top, and you should see the light and a lever. Pull the lever one direction, and that should trigger the beacon achievement. Yeah. 
So next, what you're gonna do is reload the checkpoint and it will bring you back to the top of the mountain. From here, we need to bring the rail cart back up. Then take this chain and loop it around the hook of the rail cart. Once the chain is hooked, make the rail cart go down the mountain, and it will pull out the dam blocking the water. Head over to the right towards the orange raft in the lake, and push it out into the water a little bit and climb on top. Now to make sure that we don't fall into the water and void the surfer achievement, look down and grab onto the raft the whole time. This will basically just make it so you don't go flying off the side of it, but you will need to make some minor adjustments to keep the raft going straight and to keep it from flipping over. And if you were successful, you have unlocked the Surfer Achievement. Now, the last two achievements that we need are to complete the level, both Feet First and Head First. So from where we are right now, grab onto the side of the water wheel and hold on until you are at the top. Once at the top, stand on top of the water wheel and jump off onto the platform, pull the lever to the right, and that will open the grates to the exit of this level. Then just run to the end of the diving board and jump off. We're gonna do the feet first achievement first, which is the more common of the two, but if you did go in head first first, wait until you have completed the speedrun achievement and then come back and repeat what we just did after the fact. Now for the people that got the feet first one first, again I would also recommend completing the speedrun achievement before coming back and doing this one, as exiting the level and restarting the water level will void the speedrun achievement. But if you have already completed the speedrun achievement or you just don't care, go ahead and restart the water level, use the rowboat to get to the gaps in the rock after the archway, cross the water to the other side, jump up the ledge and then over the gap, hop onto the rail car, and make your way to the top of the mountain. Make sure to loop the chain around the hook on the rail car and send it back down the mountain to open the dam once again. Once the dam is open, climb on the raft and make your way down the mountain. Once you are again at the bottom of the mountain, grab onto the water wheel and make your way to the platform up top. Pull the lever to the right to open the grates, and then very slowly walk to the edge of the diving board and just kind of fall off pretty close to it. This will put you on the ledge in front of the exit of the level. Now we want to very carefully jump down to the grates, Look down to bend over and grab onto the grates near the edge, then push X on the Xbox controller or square on the PlayStation controller to go into ragdoll mode, and you should flip headfirst into the water. And that should be the water level complete. Hopefully it wasn't too painful.
Moving on to Power Plant, home of the infamous Will It Fry achievement. And I promise, I made it easier this time. Right, so there are only six achievements that we need to complete in Power Plant. First up, we have Electricity 101 for short-circuiting the wires. Thief for stealing the battery from the statue. Will It Fry, of course, for feeding an appliance with power from three batteries. Delivery Boy for delivering ten pieces of coal to the main island. Petrol Head for using any of the ground vehicles to travel one kilometer. And lastly, the end. Complete Power Plant. So to start, we're going to take out one of the wires from the left terminal in the beginning room, and then plug the other end of the remaining wire into the vacant slot in the terminal. This will send you flying back with a loud pop and unlock the Electricity 101 achievement. Next, we're going to unplug both of the wires from both terminals and carry them through the now not spinning fan. On the other side of the fan, plug the wires into the matching terminals, and the gate will slide open. Go ahead and take this first set of wires with you to the next area. In the next area, we have our first battery, which we will need to plug into the terminal with the wires already there, and that will slide open the next door. Now we're going to unplug the battery and take it with us, and place it by the button slash door in the next area. Make sure to remember to take the first set of wires with you to the next area. We're going to head to the left side of this area, and you should see a fan in the wall. Climb up this ledge, and then jump and grab onto the fan, and it will fall out. Next up, we're going to take the broken fan over to the button and place it on top. So in this area, turn around and you will see a red switch on the wall. Go ahead and turn it on and that will get the conveyor belt moving. Next, we're going to go back into the previous room and jump up the same ledge where we got the fan. Hop to the next wall and very carefully walk across it to the conveyor belt. Climb on top of the conveyor belt, jump to the next ledge, and grab the box. Jump back onto the conveyor belt, and then we're just going to take this box and place it on top of the button, opening the door to the next area. Now, to get our second battery, we're going to go back to the ledge on the wall in the previous area, and jump back onto the conveyor belt.
Once here, we're gonna jump right back onto the ledge. From here, we're gonna jump diagonally to the low part of the wall, and then we'll head to the right, climbing up the wall even further. Climb on top of this gray box, and you will see a wire connected to one of the electricity things. I don't know what they're called. But anyway, grab onto the wire. Hold on, and then we're gonna swing towards the statue, and either knock down or grab the battery in its hand. Once the battery is out of its hand, go ahead and drop down to the dark floored area below. And we're gonna pick up one of the wires and take it to the area to the right of the statue. You'll see a ramp leading up to a lever, and all we're gonna do is wrap this wire around the lever so it stays down, and this will raise a pathway to the previous area. Now we're gonna grab the battery that we just stole from the statue, and take it to the previous area. And then through the doorway that we opened with the box. In front of you, you should see our third battery, as well as the battery charger. So we're gonna bring all of the batteries into this area, and plug them in to make sure they are all charged. Now, once you've made sure they are all charged, we're gonna take them over to the terminal on the other wall. And we're gonna plug in a red wire into the red plug on the terminal, and then a blue wire into the blue plug on the terminal. Now we're going to bring over one of our batteries, and we're going to plug the blue wire into the blue socket on the battery.
Next up, we're going to place a red wire into the red socket on the battery. Then we're going to go over and grab our second battery. Plug the red wire from the first battery into the blue socket on the second battery, and then we're going to plug a new blue wire into the red socket on the second battery. Now go over and get the third and final battery. And we're going to place the red wire from the terminal into the red socket and the blue wire from the second battery into the blue socket. And that should be the Will It Fry achievement complete and in my opinion much more easily than the original video. Now that that's taken care of, we can restart the level. Once again, go ahead and unplug the wires in the first room from the terminal. Head out the room through the fan. And then we're just going to hang a right and walk over to the corner of this wall. From here, we're just going to use the same exact method we used on the castle level to get across this gap. And then once on the other side, you should see a small dump truck. Go ahead and climb on in. We're going to push the lever forward once to get the dump truck moving slowly, and then grab onto the wheel and move left and right to steer it. Now, you can make the dump truck go faster by pushing the lever forward again, uh, but it is much harder to control, so if you have the patience, I would recommend just leaving it in the first gear. These next two achievements will take longer, but you won't have to deal with falling off the map and resetting. Now, just keep driving down the road in front of you. and then park the bucket of the dump truck just underneath this hopper. We're gonna hop out of the dump truck. And make our way inside this cave in the mountain, where you should find a giant pile of coal and a conveyor belt. We need to throw at least 10 pieces of coal onto the conveyor belt, which will take them to the hopper and into the dump truck. I went ahead and loaded up way more than 10 pieces just to be safe, in case any fall out on the trip back to the main island. So once you have at least 10 pieces, we're going to make our way back over to the dump truck. Confirm that there are 10 pieces of coal in the bucket. And then we're just going to start the dump truck moving forward once again. We're going to go around the mountain and onto the second road leading back to the mainland. Be careful not to drive off the side, and then we're just going to go right back to where we got the dump truck in the first place.
And then once you are close to where we initially found the dump truck, you will unlock the Delivery Boy achievement so long as you have 10 pieces of coal. Now to get the Petrol Head achievement for driving a ground vehicle for one kilometer, we're just gonna take this same dump truck and make a couple loops around this track. So once again, just be careful not to fall off the side, or when you reload the checkpoint, the dump truck will be facing backwards, and it'll be a lot harder to get back on the road. But like I said, just make a few loops of this road, and you should end up with the petrol head achievement.
Now, to finish up this level, we're gonna go around to the back side of this building, and we're gonna head to the pair of two silos, where you will find a hole in one of them. And we will need to jump into the fan to launch ourselves into the air and through to the closest of the three silos, where we will complete the level and unlock the end achievement. And now our final achievement that we need to worry about is the speedrun achievement. So I've already shown you how to complete all the original levels as fast as you can. So now we'll be just moving on to Aztec. To start off on Aztec, we're going to take those two pieces of wood, and you can either create a lever out of them to tip over the large flat block, or what I did, which is a little bit faster, was just stuff one of the logs underneath the flat rock, walk over to the side, jump onto the log, and then over the gap to the next area. Now to get around this wall, we're going to head to the right side of it and swing around using the same method we used in Mountain and Power Plant to get to the other side. From here, we're going to walk to the middle of this area and start climbing up these giant steps. Head to the left, and you will see a platform with a box on top of it. Move the box a little bit closer to this hedge. And then climb up the hedge. We're going to head around to this light green area, and just continue walking around the rocks and climbing over hedges until we reach the final area of the map, which is at the bottom of this pyramid. Head over to the giant door held up by the pulley. Grab onto the bottom of it and lift it up just enough so you can slide underneath. Walk through the hallway, and that will be the Aztec level finished. And if you haven't gotten it already, you will also get the end no question mark achievement. Moving on to the dark level, we're going to take this crate and place it directly underneath the window. Climb out the window. And head around the house to the front. And remove the plank barring the door. Keep heading around the side of the house and climb up this pile of planks. around the corner, hop up the ledge, and back inside the house. Pick up the axe from the floor, and head out the front door.
You'll see a giant tree that we need to swing the axe at to chop down. Once the tree has fallen, we're going to push it forward across the gap and carefully make our way across it, reaching the other side. From here, we're going to head to the left to the green slope. And just next to it, there will be a rock in between you and the gate. Jump onto this rock, and then we're going to climb to the other side of it and fall down on the other side of the gate. This could take a little bit of patience, but it's not too difficult, and it skips like a third of the level, so I think it's worth it. Next, we're going to continue climbing up the large steps to take the minecart. Once at the bottom of the minecart tracks, we're going to head to the left, swing across these gaps, and make our way up the next few ledges. Then up the stairs to the left, and towards the giant wheel with the handle on it. Walk inside the house, and jump the gap. Then turn to your left and jump up and over this ledge as well. Walk up the stairs, jump this gap on the corner, and then climb up the bookshelves. Climb up and over this ledge to get to the outside of the house. And up and over this one as well to get on top of some more bookcases. Here we will find a battery. Let's pick it up and drop down to the lower area of the house. Remove the plank barring the door. Then turn around and you should find a second battery. Let's take both of these batteries back outside to the giant wheel. and plug them into the slot just on the side. We'll need to charge up these batteries by grabbing the handle on the wheel and turning it just like loading up the catapults in the castle level. Once the first battery is charged, you will hear a small spark, and we can now switch it out with the second. And then we're going to take these batteries, once they are done, over to the elevator in the distance. Plug both of them in, and then press the button on the elevator to go up.
Make your way to the left side of these cliffs and climb up the ledges. And make your way inside the house. From here we need to grab both of the wires on the first floor. Take them up the flight of stairs to the second floor. and plug them into the terminal. Then we'll need to grab the magnet machine from the corner of the room and plug the wires in. and then move the magnet machine underneath the metal block hanging from the ceiling. This will open the window, which has a rope attached. Grab onto the bottom of the rope and swing across to the next balcony. Head up the stairs. And then head up the stairs again. Walk through this room and jump out the other side. Once you hit the ground, just ignore everything in this area and walk into the elevator. Press the button to go down. Once at the bottom and in the caves, we're going to head to the right and rotate this pillar so that the bucket is on the other side of the gap. Once that's done, we're going to hop down to the lower level. Head to the tunnel just in front of the elevator and you will see another thing that I'll call a battery. Take this with you and then go grab the red wire from the tunnel just next to it. And then we're going to go to the tunnel across from the red wire. Make our way up the slope. And put them into the bucket.
Make your way back down to the lower level, and we're gonna go into the tunnel just underneath the elevator. Where you will find another battery. Take this back to the bucket. Place it inside, and then we need to jump back to the other side. So jump onto the cage and swing across. And then rotate the pillar around the other way to bring the bucket back to this side. Grab all three items and place them in the elevator. and press the button to go back up. Once you're at the top, remove the plank barring the door in front of you. And take the two batteries through the door. Up the stairs, and to the room in the tower. Plug both of these batteries in. And then we're gonna jump right back down to where the elevator is. Now all we need to do to finish the level is plug in both of the wires into the respective terminals. and then flip the switch next to the main terminal. This should open the hatch to the end of the level, and if you have not already, you will receive the It's Alive achievement for completing the Dark level. Next up we have the steam level. As soon as you drop in, drag this seesaw over to the left, near the wall, and walk across it to the next side.
In front of you, you'll see another seesaw. Bring it to the left. And place it in the middle of this caution tape. This will bring a barrel down. Position the barrel so it can't move around. And then climb up the ledge to the side, and run across the barrel, and jump up to the ledge. From here, we're gonna pull the lever on this steam machine, and that will open the garage door. We're gonna take the pipe from the previous area. And connect it to where you see steam coming out. Grab the light blue pipe on the other side, and connect it to fill the gap. Climb back over to the previous area. and pull this lever down, and you will open another garage door. In front of you, you'll see a red barrel. Push it down to the area below, and continue pushing it until it's as far as it can go. Then we're going to walk back up the ramp, climb onto this tall platform, and jump and catch the seesaw to swing it around and throw a piece of pipe down to us. Take this back up the ramp, and connect it where there is a gap in the pipes. Now we're gonna stand on the edge of this red outlined platform, grab the lever, and pull the platform up so you can get to the next ledge. To the right, you'll see a furnace with a bunch of coal in it, and some sticks on the ground. Grab one of the sticks and bring it to the edge. And then we're gonna jump onto this seesaw, and swing it across to the other side. After you land on top of the grates, we're gonna go back to the original side, and climb up the ledges. We're then going to grab the seesaw and move it all the way to the right. Go back and grab the stick. Walk across the seesaw until you see a hole in the side of this wall. And if you're unlike me, you should be able to jump right on inside. From here, pick back up your stick and place it in the fire to light it. Now remove the planks from the doorway.
pick up the flaming stick once again. And then set it down somewhere safe. We're going to jump back over the gap to the original side. Pull the seesaw to the left now. And just walk across the gap, making sure to flip the seesaw around. Now pick up the stick and do the same thing on the way to the other side. Place the stick on fire inside the furnace. Turn around and re-grab the seesaw to swing to the other side. And we can now pull this lever to open the door. Now, once through the door, you'll see a big red plank. Get a running start and then run into it. And you and it should end up on the lower platform. Position the red plank in between the caution tape and place it over the gap in between the falling barrels. Once again, position the barrel so that it can't move, and then climb up it to the next area. From here, collapse the scaffolding to get these pieces of pipe. And then we need to climb over this wall. From here, let's remove the T-pipe from the machine in the middle. And replace it with an L-pipe. This will cause too much pressure and blow the lid off this machine. Let's go ahead and take that same piece of T-pipe and connect it to the other set of pipes, just like so. Then let's disconnect this L-pipe and connect it to the T-pipe. Now we need to go back into the previous area through the gate to get those two pieces of pipe from the scaffolding. Once you have both of these...
plug the second L pipe into our first T pipe. And then take the second T pipe and fill in the gap. This should now open a door on the other side of the area. Walk through this door and you should see another set of pipes. Remove the T-pipe. And we're going to take it to the left side and use it to smash the glass just in front of us. Place it off to the side, we won't need that pipe anymore. Now we're just going to start cleaning up some of this glass by picking it up and throwing it off the side of the level.
Now, once most of the glass is removed, we're going to roll the barrel that's on its side over towards this tin roof. Climb on top of the barrel. And then onto the tin roof. Climb up the ledge to the area with the tree, and you should see a chain. Grab onto it, and we're gonna swing it across to the next area. From here, we're gonna flip over this seesaw. It's not really a seesaw anymore, but you get the idea. And we're gonna climb up to the ledge where it leads to. Get a running start and jump onto the seesaw to flip it back over so that we can make our way on top of this container. From here, grab the L pipe. And then we're just going to remove the straight pipe. And plug it into the gap on the middle set of pipes. This will get the giant wheel spinning. Go ahead and grab onto it, and then at the top, jump off onto the platform, where you will find an X-pipe. Bring this X-pipe down to where we just were. And replace the straight pipe in the middle with it. Now we're going to connect the two L-pipes into the X-pipe. And the wheel will start going even faster now. But it will leave enough damage so that you can make your way through. And if you have not already, you will get the Under Pressure Achievement for completing Steam. Now onto our final level of the Speedrun Achievement, we have Ice. So, first up, we're gonna turn around and grab one of the ice cubes behind us, keep it in the shadow so it doesn't melt, and put it just in front of this ledge to climb up. Now we're going to walk around to the back side of the next ledge. Grab one of the ice cubes and hold it out in the sun for a little bit to melt it. Squeeze the ice cube through the gap.
and then pull it up next to the ledge to climb up. Once we enter the next area, we're going to head to the right and climb up these next two ledges. From here, just make your way to the other side of the platform, underneath the wood awning, and with a running start, we should be able to jump across the gap to this next ledge. From here, we're going to enter the cave and jump onto one of the spikes from the ceiling. It will fall down. Once it falls down, turn around and climb back up. Then we're going to jump across this gap by jumping onto the top of the spike and continuing up the path until we see a chain hanging down from the ceiling. Jump and grab onto the chain and then swing across to the next spike. There should be a small ramp on the ground that you can climb up, jump from that onto the top of the second spike, and then make your way into the next area. You should see in front of you a giant scale. Rotate it around so that one of the platforms is in the shadows. And then we're gonna go grab the head of the snowman. and roll it around in the snow in the shadows, so that it gets bigger. Then once the giant snowball is taller than you, roll it onto the platform that we put in the shadows. Grab one of the ice cubes and drag it next to the second platform. Climb up to the walkway above and make your way to the right of the area. From here you should see some snowboards. Grab one and strap on in. And we're just going to go down the ramp and jump the gap to get to the other side. Once on the other side, go ahead and climb up onto the circular platform, grab onto the handles, and then move your feet to the left. Jump up to the next level. Push down the first box of ice cubes. And place the wooden box on top of it to keep it held down. 
jump onto the unboxed ice cubes to the left, and onto the platform and onto the next level. From here, we're going to go to the right of the area, into this little shack, and grab another wooden box. We're going to push down and place this wooden box onto the first box of ice cubes, and that will raise the other one up. Climb onto the second one. And then onto the building. Let's go ahead and grab the large board, and we're just going to throw it on the ground for now. Run back over to the first box of ice cubes and grab the box from on top of it. And then we're going to go back to the second box of ice cubes and place the large board on top of them. Grab the wooden box and then we're going to head down to the next lower level. Place it on the furthest right box of ice cubes, and then climb back up to the previous level. Now we just need to make our way on top of the shack that we got the wooden box from. And climb up to the next level. Now from here, we're just going to jump across this gap, and to the right, we're going to use that same method that we've used in Mountain, Power Plant, and Aztec, and swing around the corner, and then just keep rotating ourselves along the side of this mountain. Eventually, you should come across a ledge jutting out from the side. Go ahead and fall down onto it, and then jump down into the area with the ski lift. From here, we're going to head to the right of the area. Rotating the awnings above us to create a path of shadows. Once that's done, we're going to grab the ice cube just in front of this house here, and drag it through the shadows until we get close to the button. And then I would just recommend putting the ice cube directly on the button from here. I rotated the ski lift around a little bit, and it made me miss the first one. And then we're going to place the ice cube on top. If you miss the first ski lift, you may still have some time to grab the second one. But once you can, grab onto one of the chairs, and then stay on until you see a box. 
When you see the box, jump off. There should be a small gap as you approach the box. Jump it, and then turn around to find a second one. We're gonna take this second box and place it in between the gap. Climb back up and grab the first box, and we're gonna go replace the ice cube that was on the button with this box. Once the box is on the button, grab another chair, and we're gonna stay put until the ski lift turns around. Once here, jump off, and you will see a detonator. Push down the detonator, And once the statue has fallen down, we're going to start climbing across it. And once you reach the end, go ahead and jump down on into the mountain. And that will be the ice level complete. And you will fall through to a snowy version of Mansion. Now all we need to do is complete Mansion just like before. You can jump the gap if you want to. And then make your way over to the two buttons on the wall. Press them. Open the door and jump out. Now if that is your first time completing the ice level, you will unlock the avalanche achievement. And if you completed all of the levels from mansion to ice in one sitting, or pausing and coming back to it but not exiting the game, you will unlock the speed run achievement as well. Alright, well that is pretty much gonna do it for me guys. I hope this video fixed some issues from the original guides. I know for me, it made Will It Fry a lot easier to understand. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next Wednesday for another weekly video or Tuesday, Friday, or Saturday for a 10 a.m. Central Time stream.